Good morning. Welcome to Renaissance Christian Church. My name is Jim Kelly. Uh, we were supposed to have a live service today, but due to increasing numbers of COVID-19 cases, and for the sake of all of our congregation, we decided to cancel tonight's service, and instead I will be doing a virtual message today. My message today is called Peacemakers or Troublemakers. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Into a world that is ugly with violence and hate, Jesus calls us to be peacemakers. We aren't given the choice of whether to be peacemakers or not, and we certainly aren't given the choice of what kind of world we live in. But you know, as bad as things are, this is the only world we have. And if we're going to be true to our Lord, we need to be peacemakers. So what did Jesus mean by peacemaker? A working definition of peacemaker is someone who is actively, actively seeking to reconcile people to God and to one another. Let's look closely at the word peacemaker. Easily we can see that this is a compound word comprised of two very common words, peace and peace maker. The word peace in Hebrew is the word shalom. It's often used as a greeting word or a departing word in much the same way as we would utter hello or goodbye or aloha. It is a broad term related to health, prosperity, harmony, and wholeness. It means perfect welfare, serenity, fulfillment, freedom, freedom from trouble, Liberation from anything that hinders contentment. When a Jew said shalom, they were wishing on one another the full presence, peace, and prosperity of the blessedness of God. The famous ironic benediction of Numbers 6, uh, 24 to 26, brings out this idea very clearly. The Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look with favor upon you and give you peace. It is important to remember that peace in the Bible is always based on justice and righteousness. Where peace prevails and righteousness rules, there you will find peace. Without those two virtues, lasting peace is not possible. So justice and righteousness. Now the word, uh, may, the word making up the word peacemaker comes from the Greek word that means to do and to make. That's the word make in peacemakers, to do and to make. It is a word bursting with energy. It mandates action and initiative. Someone has to drag the combatants to the table and give them reason to put down their arms. Notice, Jesus didn't say, blessed are the peace wishers, or the peace hopers, or the peace dreamers, or the peace lovers, or the peace talkers. Peace must be made. Blessed are the peacemakers. Peace never happens by accident. A peacemaker is never passive. It requires initiative. It requires to people, people to be up and doing. So when these two words are taken together, peace and maker, it destri describes one who actively pursues peace. The peacemaker pursues uh, more than just absence of conflict. They don't just avoid strife. They aren't merely seeking to appease the warring parties. They aren't trying to accommodate everyone. Instead, they are pursuing all the beauty and blessedness of God upon another. As William Barclay translates this verse, they are people who produce right relationships in every sphere of life. They are people who produce right relationships in every sphere of life. I want to tell you a little bit of a story of Nelson Mandela. 
You'll remember Nelson Mandela was the president of South Africa who had spent many years unjustly in prison. Well, after he got out of prison and he became the president, he asked some of his bodyguards to go for a walk. And after the walk, they went to a restaurant. And the president said, after a bit of waiting, the waiter brought our menus. And at that moment, I realized that at the table right in front of me was a single man waiting to be served. When he was served, I asked one of my soldiers to go and asked that man to come and join us. Well, the soldier went and extended the invitation. The man stood up, took his plate, and sat next to me. When eating, his hands were constantly shaking, and he didn't lift his head from his food. And when we finished, he waved at me without even looking at me, and I shook his hand, and I walked away. Soldier said to me, Madiba, that man must be very sick, as his hands wouldn't stop shaking while he was eating. And Nelson Mandela replied, Not at all. The reason for his tremor is another. They looked at me weird, and I said to them, That man was the guardian of the jail in which I was locked up in. Often, after the torture that I was sub subjected to, I screamed and I cried for water, and he came and he humili humiliated me. Instead, he laughed at me, and instead of giving me water, he urinated on my head. He wasn't sick. He was scared, and he shook, maybe fearing that I, now that I'm the president of South Africa, might send him to jail and do the same thing to him that he did to me, torturing and humiliating him. But Mandela continued, but that's not me. That behavior is not part of my character or part of my ethics. Minds that seek revenge destroy states, while those who seek reconciliation build nations. I'm going to repeat that sentence by Nelson Mandela. Minds that seek revenge destroy states, while those that seek reconciliation build nations. When we read the words of Jesus, blessed are the peacemakers, we smile blandly and say, oh, isn't that nice? And we think the United Nations peacekeeping for us. But peacekeeping is not nice. Peacekeeping is messy and a wrenching work. It takes time and emotional energy. It's like crossing a fast-moving stream on slippery rocks. The journey is needed. The work is risky. And sometimes you fail. You get bruised. And sometimes you don't make it across the creek. But let me be honest. Sometimes peacekeeping doesn't work. In Paul's letter to the Romans, he exhorted, if possible, on your part, live at peace with everyone. Yes, we are to live at peace with everyone. That is a pretty clear command. But Paul adds that all-important phrase, if it is possible. Sometimes, people, sometimes peace isn't possible because there are those cantankerous peoples that just go through life picking fights with everyone they meet. You can't always live at peace with people like them. However, let's focus on the phrase, as far as it depends on you. The hallmark of a Christian is the ability to get along with other people. The testimony of the church is its ability to get along with other people. We have a God-given spiritually directed responsibility to pursue peace. The Apostle Paul declared, God has called you to peace. Does that mean we agree with everything that everybody says and does? No. Sometimes we have to disagree agreeably. God wants his children to be bridge builders. And that's what I call upon you today, to think of yourself as a bridge builder and look for opportunities to build bridges. We'll talk more about that shortly. What well, Jesus said, those that are peacemakers will be known and recognized for what they really are. What's that? The sons of God. You may assume at first glance that sons of God and the term children of God 
are one and the same thing, but they aren't quite identical. A child of God is one who, who is part of the family. It is a statement of position. A son of God is one who is like the family. It is a statement of character. A son of God who is not only one that carries the family name, but he bears the family resemblance. In other words, Jesus said, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. So we want to develop our character to the character of Jesus. Jesus is saying that as his followers become peacemakers, they will be recognized as the, as the sons of God who share his name and share his mission. Do the people in your life recognize that family resemblance based on your efforts of peacemaking? You may be a child of God because you've accepted Christ, but are you a son of God because you pursue peace? Are you actively seeking to pursue people or to reconcile rather people to God and one another? Putting two neighbors back together on speaking terms Restoring unity within your family or making amends with a brother or sister or a neighbor? Are you recognized as assisting in God's activity in our world? We need to be doing what God himself has done for us through Christ and doing to others what God intends of us. I also have to point out the opposite, however. The opposite of peacemaker is troublemaker. People who are mean-spirited, stirring up strife, creating conflict. Allow me to quote pastor and author Ken Hughes, who said, If we are not like peacemakers, but instead are troublemakers, there is every likelihood that we are not true children of God. Notice his word choice. Troublemakers are definitely not bearing the character of Jesus. I won't choose to judge their salvation or their relationship to God, but we need to judge their actions. Are they peacemakers or are they troublemakers? Troublemakers make trouble for the sake of trouble. If our character is such that we spread rumors and gossip about others, if we're constantly fomenting discontent, if we find joy in the troubles of others and scandal, and if we're always critical and always fault-finding, if we're always unwilling to be involved in peacemaker, peacemaking, if we are mean, if these negative characteristics can, uh, uh, characters our lives, then we are certainly not reflecting the character of Jesus Christ. Let this mind be in you which is in Christ Jesus. We are living in difficult and divided times. The United States has been through a very long, very difficult election, and the country is deeply divided by differing political viewpoints. The election is passed. Joe Biden is now the president-elect of the United States, and Kamala Harris is the uh, vice president-elect of the United States. No matter your political viewpoint or your political persuasion, we are called to be peacemakers. This means working together for the common good, not basing our actions on divisiveness and discord. As most of you know, I am a Canadian. But I also love the United States. I love Canada too, but I love the United States. My mother was born there. I have an American history that predates the, the country of the United States. I can trace my family history back to uh, around the year 1700 and perhaps even before. Well, I am concerned then about everything that's been going on. I'm concerned about the attitudes and actions of people because people need to come together and they need to fight the foes of democracy, the foes of intolerance. This week is Remembrance Day in Canada. And it's a week of remembrance in many parts of the world. And I would like to share with you the great iconic Canadian poem in Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row and row that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly. 
scarce heard amid the guns below. Where are the dead? Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. I would like to dedicate that poem as well to my grandfather, Kelly, who died in the Battle of the Somme in the First World War. The poppies that you see behind me on my mantle are a tribute to him, done from a family reunion we did a few years ago. So take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. I would ask you today, who is our foe? And I would suggest that our foes are those who foment intolerance and hatred against their victims and the oppressed people of the world who are living in the shadows. These are the people in exile within our own social and economic systems. These are the people who cry out for pe for peace and freedom and liberation from their oppression. And this oppression can take on many forms, financial, social, racial, and discrimination of all types. As followers of Christ, Christians must learn to respect the dignity of every human being and love others as we love ourselves. When we look out on the world, we should be able to see immediately the injustices of poverty, race, gender, and all other oppressions. We should see that the shadow of the cross falls heavily upon these victims of oppression and violence and degradation. Peacemaking is a radical concept that involves correcting the wrongs and injustices that hold people in bondage and prevent their emergence into the promised land of freedom and hope. There's so much strife, so much pain that exists in the world. Well, that means there is plenty of work for you and me to do. Will we take up the mantle of peacemaker? Every tiny step, every pure action receives God's blessings. And that might mean reaching out. It might mean reaching out to other people to help them, to offer them whatever their needs require of us, whatever we're able to do for them. Let's be a peacemaker. We're not called to be troublemakers. We're called to be peacemakers. So what is your choice? I wish you a blessed week as we move forward. The next live service at Renaissance Church is planned to be on, on uh, November the 22nd, and our guest speaker will be Ron Lindsay, and I hope you'll be able to join us, 409 East Broadway, Vancouver, BC. Otherwise, I'll see you virtually next Sunday. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Bye for now.